Jay Eyre is not responsible for the views and opinions expressed by its presenters or guests. Jay Eyre presents a wide variety of views and opinions, which is to the benefit and purpose of community radio. The right stuff. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And yes, I have just assumed your genders. It's Harry and Rabbi Pesach back in the cupboard for another week, another hour of hijinks and mayhem and frivolity. How are we, Rabbi Pesach? Hello, Harry. Welcome, everybody, to another fun-filled evening of um, of w- w- all sorts of terrible things that we're going to discuss that uh, in the conservative world. I don't think they're terrible. Some people think they're terrible. Some people think we're terrible. <laughs> but we're going to have fun while we do it. And if you would like to join in on the fun at any point in time, 9069-2087 is the number to call. Uh, or if you're watching the live stream, you can send us a message. I do have the screen in the corner of my eye, and sometimes I do notice when things pop up. So feel free, say hello, let us know what's really... Uh, Tonight we are going to talk about Whoopi Goldberg... The Freedom Convoy in Canada. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I knew that would get your interest. Brittany Higgins and Grace Fain. Back to school for the kids. I don't know what you're talking about there. Uh, (laughs) Because mine went out of school. Uh, Harry calling out BS when he sees BS. No, that wasn't a discussion for us to have on the radio. I think you should definitely call it. No, that was me simply sharing Are you saying that that's BS, Harry? I'm not saying it's BS. I'm saying I was sharing (laughs) a story with you. And it um, wasn't something I thought worthwhile discussing and, and boring our listeners with. Temple parts ways with the rabbi. I want to say something little about that. Okay. Because uh, it only deserves something little. Yep. Uh, song lyrics. What about them? Oh, I've got a good one. Like a virgin touched for the very first time. Yeah, what does that mean? Like, really, <laughs> yeah. if, you think, if you think about it, that's that's kind of creepy. We're going to talk about the Israel Confederation that's being touted at the moment, the United States of Israel. Oh, that got your interest. Is it big We've enough? We've got the brain cogs working is there. It, well, like, geographically, <laughs> is it big enough? We're going to talk about cars, bikes, and electric bikes. No, we're not. Yeah. No, electric bikes don't deserve mentioning. Medicare. No, what have I got here? Medicines and health. I thought it said Medicare. Medicines and health. How's your health? You know what? We've only got a one hour show. And even then, like it's between promos we're gonna and talk ads about, and everything, we get 48 We're going to talk about pickles. By the time you finished your Can list. Can we talk about pickles? By the time you finish your list, we're going to have to say. We're going to talk about pickles. Also, again, where is everyone? Elisa is in Israel. She's just landed. Sorry, did I kick you? you, you Elisa did. is in Israel. <laughs> the Chinese U- Winter Olympics and the defector. There's a defector? Don't you know about that? No. Yeah, because I've been paying so much attention to you know a what sporting I'm event about. that I've never been interested in hosted by a bunch of communists. Don't you, you don't know what I'm talking about? No. Oh, oh, I've got some good news there. Oh, excellent. So what? Someone's defected to China. And finally, Dan versus ScoMo. Yes. W- but I'm that's not sure what that's all oh, about. Oh, something I didn't know. know I didn't know about Please, all that. I'm so around all the issues and everything, and you don't know about this one. Well. There we go. So where are we going to start? Shall we go for a... No. No, we'll just start with something. Yeah, but let's just start. Well, Lisa's, I'm getting untold amounts of WhatsApps. Oh, Lisa, I'm in Israel. I've just, she's on her gap year. This is my daughter, Lisa. Should we try calling her? Uh, I think we'll leave her just at this second to collect her baggage at the moment. Maybe towards the end of the hour. Okay. We'll call her. We'll give her a go. And maybe we can talk to her every week. But it's really getting those kids off. Uh, at the airport, at the airport, the airport, the the air. I was going to yes, say airplane. I think my children at the airport. How do you spell airport? No, how do you spell airplane? Well, it depends. Are we talking the English? Thank you. Spelling or is it A I R P L A N E or is That's it A E R O? Well, because we follow the English tradition, it's A E R O. It's A R O. Aeroplane. Aeroplane. Whereas the Americans, it's an airplane. <laughs> Uh, whatever. Okay. <laughs> but anyway. Well, that's the difference. I mean, it is the difference. Uh, so it's very exciting. There was a big group of them at the at Melbourne Airport. 
singing We Sang Hatikva last night. And it's amazing, she went through Abu Dhabi. Now, Abu Dhabi or Dubai? She mm -hmm. flew on Etihad and she went through Abu Dhabi. That's right. right. Dubai's the one where the big I building know, is. I don't know a lot about the Middle East, but I know the people in Addis Ababa don't like the Flintstones. Addis, why in Addis Ababa don't like I the Flintstones? I have no idea, but the people serious? in Abu Dhabi do. <laughs> oh, I've been waiting so long to use that gag on the radio. How do you do that? <laughs> boom. Yeah, whatever. Or ba boom. Boom kish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why so Rochelle asked me a really good question today good on you Rochelle it's about time why now is the flight to Israel 17 hours I can't hear myself properly because planes fly faster planes fly faster and they now stop in the Middle East as opposed to having to fly around or stopping in Bangkok, yeah, and then flying around the Middle East to come back into Bangkok and over the Red Sea. But why didn't they do it in the first place? Because relationships have only recently been normalised, normalized, right, between Israel and Saudi Arabia and all these other so places. So, tell me, what brought that on? Uh, How long has <laughs> it been? It's been about two years. It's been a, it's been a couple of years. Three years. And what brought that on? Um, I don't know, people you know, finally came to the realisation that they're just beating their heads against the wall. Israel is not going anywhere. Yeah. And there is more to gain by recognising Israel as a genuine sovereign state than not. Ooh, I can't you know, see. Now, what's going on internally between yeah. the Muslim Brotherhood and all these other Islamically ruled countries, I, I have no idea. But the ones that have decided, you know what? Israel's but who here. kicked it off? What do you mean, who kicked it off? Was it Jared Kushner? Didn't I, he go to the UAE and start talking to them I, about? I think they had to be. I think they had to be with Israel. Part in it, but you know, at the end of the day, these people have dug their heels in for so long. Yeah. You know, little plebs like us will never know the full story behind it. But it's good to see that it's happening. I mean. You know, I don't, I, I don't think I'd like to be going there. Oh, really? You wouldn't no. want to fly to no. Dubai and see the no. world's I, tallest building? No. I have no interest in visiting any country where, whether it's because of uh, the colour of my skin, the country of my birth, uh, my faith, or any of those things, um, I have no interest in going to a country where the government at, at at the sovereign level yeah they would rather see me dead but they've got a Why chabad house there now well you know what good on the chabad nicks that, that are crazy enough to go and man these things i would want for the same reason i won't go to china but surely if they've normalized relations now it's okay to go via who knows what they've done? I'm not even sure how you can get to Israel anymore from our part of the world without going through yeah. Dubai I or don't, I don't know. Qatar or... I don't know. It's a bit but weird, say, you know, it? I can understand, all right, well, we're going to use your airport. We'll pass through the airport in, you know, transit landers, whatever. I really would have no interest in walking outside yep. to see any part of that country. While we're on this topic... There's something strange happened uh, when I flew to Israel, must be about five years ago. I flew through China and I caught the plane out of Shanghai to Israel, to Tel Aviv. And um, and the plane it was a China, not China Southern. It was, uh, I've forgotten the name. It's one of the smaller airlines. And um, We the, fly low. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> what did you call it? We fly low. We fly <laughs> <laughs> that's racism. No, it's not. It's yeah. that's just what their devils do. But surely, so now this plane was full of Chinese people flying to Israel. Hold and on, I, I would have been you jumped on a plane in China, correct? And the plane was full of of Chinese, Chinese people. people. Wow, mind. Blown. Except for one thing. Yeah, you weren't Chinese. I was. I wasn't Chinese. Yes, you, you're what we you're what we would have referred to as the statistical anomaly, or just token. They call me token. Yeah. <laughs> There's a Jew. Come, let's go. We can go. Um, what were they doing? What were they all doing? Do you think they were going on holiday? 
They would have been doing all sorts of things. They, they were doing. You know what they were doing? They were doing reconnaissance for the regime. Let me tell you what they were doing. They were workers. Right. And they were going to Israel to help build the tunnel for the new train link between Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. That's interesting, isn't it? Yep. So Israel was importing Chinese workers. Yeah. Whereas so, we just import the trains. So it makes me think of the old days of manacled people being sent to all sorts of places and being told, you do this, you do that. And then, what the hell was that? I don't know. Um, what did you have for, for dinner? <laughs> Maybe it was a big door shutting. Um, and is it slave labour? Touchy territory, sensitive area. Possibly. Like, how much are these people getting paid? getting paid? I'm curious to know. Uh, I should have asked him. I should have asked him how much you're getting you getting paid know what? to do they this. They would be at least be getting paid what the government would be paying them to sit on their tochuses if they didn't have jobs in China. Yeah. They'd have to. But, you know, with all these uh, national infra infrastructure projects that are getting built all around the world, mm. and... Like, for example, the, the new harbour and uh, ship area that they built in, that China's built in Fiji, mm -hmm. that Fiji paid for. And well, now, and now, and that no, Fiji has so, been uh, lent the money for, right. and China's just waiting for them to Not default to, on to the default, loan right. exactly. so that they could walk in and go, so yeah, now, well, don't worry about it, we'll just look after it. I'm curious whether here. that was all Chinese, it would have all been Chinese workers who built that. They would have flown them in by the. Yeah. Possibly. I, I don't know. And we have to be very careful what we say because well, this is a matter of public record because we're on the radio. I know, but maybe, Even though there, no one's maybe listening there's to us, this... Because if they were, our phones would be it ringing makes me off wonder on whether there is Yeah. It makes me wonder whether the slave trade, modern-day slave trade, is alive and well. The modern-day slave trade is alive and well. But in a new de facto kind of style. Well, not even that. I mean, young women, girls... Uh, being abducted on a daily basis through across Asia and South America and uh, the Middle East yep. and, and being sold for for sex slaves. That's right. Um, you know, to, to think that slavery is this purely Western um, contrivance is crazy. I mean, every society all over the world throughout history there's been some concept of slavery. I mean, even we had slavery in, in uh, uh, Israel. When, when we first moved into Eretz Yisrael, we, we were given a whole bunch of rules and regulations on, on how we were to treat our slaves and deal with our slaves. Oh, you're so talking about biblically, right. Bi biblically, right. We had, it was recognized that we had slaves. Biblically, it's recognized that at some point we were slaves. Um, you know the the marauding uh, the marauding hordes of, of um, Eastern Europe would take slaves from Western Europe. The Vikings would take slaves from England. They'd take you know they were, I think they were Saxons back then. You know would take slaves and schlep them all the way back to Norway, or they'd conquer parts of England, and then yep. the the locals there became slaves to the the ruling Viking warlords. The Romans had slaves. Everybody had slaves. I'm not saying it's right, but I'm just saying to think of it so in as the long context as the, of it's just this historical Western thing. As long as the people are being looked after, is there is that all okay in today's world? Well, there's nothing... Or is it that there's no free choice? Well, I don't, if they don't have free choice, well, then, yes, they are a slave. If they're being... Treated well. I mean, I don't know exactly how to define it. If you know the exact definition of what a slave is in modern terms, please give us a call on nine zero six nine two zero eight seven. But let's say someone voluntarily chooses to go somewhere. Yeah. Right. Therefore, they would not be a slave because they've chosen to go. That's true. I Regard mean, it, it, surely it's true right. that if you can now, make a choice, you are not a slave. You're not a slave. If they're not paid. What if there's no choice? As in, we, I, I choose to do it, except for the fact that I have no other choice except yeah, to commit to it. It's that or death. Basically. Well, then, yes, you're a slave. Um, if you choose to go and the conditions 
are really bad and you're not being remunerated for the work you're doing, then again, I think that makes you a slave. Yeah. But what if you're not getting any sort of financial reward other than you're being kept in a reasonable lifestyle? Yeah. Are you still a slave? Well, it seems to me a way to for the uh, rich countries like, for example, China, who is actually a rich country and have plenty... No, they're a developing nation. Just ask the Chinese government as they report to the UN every year. Yeah. If you're a country like with plenty of resources, and when I say resources, I mean people power, you can export it quite easily. So once you turn labour into an exportable commodity, has that become a slave trade? If the government okay, says well to you, you're, you're, off, you're off to Israel tomorrow companies, to build train tunnels... Okay, but would that mean companies here that uh, operate a labour hire service, mm-hmm. is that slave trade? I mean, this is all very philosophical. A very philosophical discussion. It, it, I tell you what, it's neither a, of ve- us, I, it's I a very weird experience being on an entire aeroplane full of Chinese workers going to do one single job. And, one, and you really do wonder whether they are being paid properly, what their conditions are going to be like, what they're leaving behind, what they're going to, and what's going to happen to them afterwards. Like, have all the top boxes been ticked to look after these people? And that's my socialist soapbox for tonight, Harry. Well, <laughs> if, you know what, if only I could have done, I would have just shut up and not engaged with you in it. Um, I, look, I think they're all very pertinent questions, but what are you doing about it? Right. Talking well, about, I'm talking about it with you on the radio. On right, so where's, radio. where's that going to get anyone? <clears throat> I don't know, but let's hit the button. We can move on to the next topic. Enjoy listening to J-Air? Support us and become a member by visiting our website, j-air.com.au. I have no idea what is going on. You're telling me about the Australian Press Club? Yes, today. With Brittany Higgins and Grace... Tane? Grace Tain, Tain? Tain. yes, Grace Tain, um, and she is neither of those things. Right. Um, so Grace Tain was last year's Australian of the Year that turned out to be the petulant child of the year uh, only a few... <laughs> That's very good. Uh, ...only a week or so ago. Um, and Brittany Higgins... Uh, she was a liberal greatest, backbencher? No, she was a staffer. Oh. And her greatest claim to fame was she has made allegations of sexual assault that I don't know whether they have been proven, disproven, there are matters currently pending before courts or anything like that. But these two young lasses um, had the opportunity to speak at the uh, press club in Canberra today. Yeah. And basically, from my perspective, from what I've heard of the speeches um simply used it as an opportunity to beat up on a guy that wasn't there who was that the prime minister and this was about the the discrimination new the new racial discrimination law no 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 no. this was about um uh, downplaying sexual assault and right uh, all this sort of stuff so grace grace tame uh, has made a name for herself as an advocate. She was assaulted uh, as a as a child, as a young woman, which is unbelievably tragic. And you know, I think all power to her that she ha- is, has used this experience to help other women who have had similar experiences get through it and rebuild their lives from it. Um, so there, there's no taking anything away from Grace Tame on that count. Um, but it just seems as though uh, these two young women have now been elevated to positions within the mainstream media that just are that they are not worthy of. When all they seem to be doing now is bashing the prime minister for not doing anything back at a time when he would have no idea these things were going on. Were going on. Um, you know, you can't, you know, at the, we, 
I suppose my question is, is where does it actually stop, right? Do you, you know, if, if let's say, Brittany Higgins, um, a uh, charge is laid and someone faces that charge and they are convicted... What charge are you of referring that charge to? Of, ...of sexual assault. Right. Right. And, and they're charged with that. Well, then does the crime finish with that person being found guilty... Or do we just keep on going up the line and up the line and up the line and up the mm. line until we can just chop down the tallest poppy? You mean like what should have happened with uh, Whoopi Goldberg? I think the two are totally unreliable. I mean, I think Whoopi Goldberg just... I don't know whether she was having a stroke at the time but managed to string some words together. Um, well, the buck's got... To, so you're saying the buck's got to stop somewhere? Yeah, or, so... Or, or does it... It has, And it doesn't necessarily have to keep going up the line because how can the top of the line be responsible for someone's uh, uh for someone else's indiscretion indiscretions that's right you know just because somebody else did the wrong thing doesn't necessarily mean that the bloke at the top or the woman at the top condoned that behavior yeah it just means that that particular individual did the wrong thing what upsets me reason. about about grace tone is that she's finally found her voice a year too late uh, she had look, the opportunity for a year to be Australian spent, of the Year. I think she spent a lot of time um, as Australian of the Year talking to a lot of different groups and doing a lot of good work. Do you know I that? I think this is what I understand of, of You would imagine the Australian of the, the Year should have year. A, a very great sort of full sense of fulfilment and achievement at the end of that year, saying, you know what, I did as much as I could that year. And she possibly might, but all we got to see was on Australia Day when she was passing over the torch to this year's Australian of the Year, Dylan Alcott. I think so, yeah. Right? To this year's Australian of the Year was this pouty, moody, spoilt brat that the feminists are trying to, to tout as a triumph of womanhood over... A patriarchy that I only wish existed. Yeah, yeah. I can't make uh, heads or tails of what they're no, doing. And I think that's why that, she's with that agenda. But I think at the that's moment. why she's now getting all this media attention because it's like, oh, she was a pouty, moody little child last week. Right now, because of that, we'll she got the, the invite. Yeah. Because she behaved like if she'd just been graceful. Yep. On the day. She could have done however many uh, radio interviews. She could have written however many blog posts. She, as a straight of the year, she could have written uh, opinion pieces for some of the largest newspapers in the country. Well, I think that's what and her problem was. And they I, would have. I'd never it. heard of her until this particular point in time. Well, clearly you she, weren't you weren't paying attention to no, her. No, the whole. The did you know who Grace Tame was sometime in the last twelve months? No. No, but if I'd been paying attention to who had been She's announced now finally found her voice. of the year, I would have known it twelve months ago. Um, but I don't think she's, it's a matter of finding her voice. I think it's a matter of her now being elevated and bad behaviour being rewarded. Mm. Yeah, that's fair. You know, I mean, let's be honest. If if with Brittany Higgins, if the allegations are still just allegations and she's waiting for charges to be laid against someone and, and someone to face those charges, she shouldn't be talking about it in public because that would taint... Any potential jury so that may be required. She couldn't to have talked about it. it. She well, she shouldn't be talking about it. Whether she can or can't, I don't know. I'm not a legal expert. And you'd think for 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 a radio station that's supposed to cater to the Jewish community, we should have lawyers calling us on nine zero six nine two zero eight seven every thirty seconds. Right, so. Karen Johnson. Yeah, your and friend and mine. My, your friend and mine. AKA. The best Karen in the world. Yeah. The worst Karen in the world. I'm uh, just a stupid Karen. And uh, her ex boyfriend, Edward Danson III, who dressed up in blackface. No. So she's very lucky because now the media's attention has all focused. I think that, you know, there's. I've got a conspiracy. They've got 
They've got these people out there who are in the limelight, who they have dirt on. And as soon as someone in the liberal media gets some sort of shunning, you know, potential shunning on them, all of a sudden someone pops up and says, Oh, oh, no, I know something that happened to this other guy who's even bigger than this person. And he did it. 20 years ago, but we can thrust it into the limelight and we don't have to have the pressure on this person anymore. Whoopi Goldberg said a stupid bloody thing. She did. What did she do? So Whoopi Goldberg basically said that the Holocaust was not about race. It was about people, man's inhumanity, man's inhumanity man, to man. man. And like in some... In some, you know, in one respect, if you try and think about this a little bit left of centre, if you look at it and you kind of sort of go a little bit cross-eyed and squint with the lights off and look at it from a different angle, you can kind of... Sorry, that was me channeling Russell Brand for a second. Um, Russell Brand. <laughs> Russell bloody <laughs> Brand. <laughs> but, I, I watched a bit of him. Like he's, can, he's turned into a complete weirdo. He was a weirdo before. Now he's it's weird. No, you know what? I think he's actually sobered up. But anyway, that's that's another com- that's a different conversation to have. But you know, in some respect, Whoopi Goldberg or Karen Johnson was kind of right when she said it wasn't about race because let's be honest, in his attempt to bring the Third Reich to its absolute ultimate pinnacle, they were out and out to kill anybody that either didn't look like them, sound like them, agree with them. So in that respect, it wasn't about race. But right, no it's tra- in, Meaning man's inhumanity to man is correct. Yes. However... A big part of it was, was race because he singled out the, the Yids. That's I right. mean, let's be honest. 1930s Germany, there was not a large African population. And I think and Mein Kampf actually spells out that uh, the Jewish people are a different race. Correct. Yeah. So she's, uh, she's, she backstepped and then she forward stepped and then she goose stepped. Yeah, she. <laughs> <laughs> really, she, she should have just gone into hiding for a month. She really should have just gone to ground and, you know, come up, gone to ground, come back and just gone, yeah, I'm really sorry. Just, I'm sorry. Like, what? I, you know what? When people make, I, blah, 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 blah. let me put my teeth back in. So, what it's I don't making perfect sense to me. Oh, really? Yeah, that made no sense to me. <laughs> when I'm struggling to understand me, there's a problem. What gets me when people make public apologies? Yeah, they go on these absolutely waffling diatribes about why they're sorry and what they had to learn in order to be sorry. And they get to go on any program they want. Everyone's willing to have them, just like Grace Tame and Brittany Higgins. Come on, the press club. Come, come. That's, that's we, 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 you did something wrong. Come. Yep. Um, but they go into these long... Win- you attention, know, attention, attention. How? Why do we make people do this? I mean, why don't we just, you know, if someone's sorry for doing something... Just say sorry. Then go... Yeah, you know what? Mia culpa. I'm really sorry. I will never do that again. You know? Or, if you're not sorry, have the cojones to say I'm not sorry. Yeah. I mean, that's what we did. Because in, in many... Did we? Yeah, remember we got a complaint? Did we actually apologise? No, we didn't. No, my point is we didn't oh, apologise. we didn't apologise. Because <laughs> our response... I was going to say... Right, we didn't Because apologize. our response was... Um, you may have got your your panties all twisted up, but we didn't say anything that wasn't true. We didn't say anything that that damaged anybody's reputation. We may have upset you due to the facts that we shared on that particular night. And we may have been wrong. And no. And in in other people's could, opinion, we you, may have been wrong. In other people's opinion, but if you can show, or you can find somebody else that can show us where we got something factually incorrect, we will apologise. Yeah. So lucky, for being incorrect. So lucky for them, Joe Rogan came along, and they yeah. found, oh. and now he's got the media spotlight yeah. because ten years ago, he called out 
the lyrics of a song and said you can't use the n-word and when he said the n-word he actually said the n-word so he said you can't use that in the song and he gets lambasted today yeah, but they're, they're having a crack at him because no that's why they're having a crack at him yeah but they're using that as an excuse yes because he's an american conservative who is against uh vaccine mandates and everyone in big tech uh basically kowtows to vaccine the, the Democrat democrats vaccine mandates. and the the vaccine mandates and look as as an australian i'm dead set against the mandates and this is something that can end up raising its ugly head again between federal and state governments uh here in victoria i don't know if you're aware but between dan and scomo between dan and can you please refer to him as the prime minister no i like scomo yeah and i know he likes my ScoMo, children call him my T tamara calls him scomo i i know that but i think it belittles the position the prime minister you know so take someone like josh frydenberg yeah right we know his full name is Joshua, but he has used Josh his entire professional life. And therefore? Right. Therefore, it's okay to address him as Josh. Oh, I see. It's not a nickname. It You're has saying become it's his a name. It's a derogatory term. In, well, it's not a derogatory term. So it's, it's just it's, using a nickname a, like you, you knock around with the bloke. Right. Okay. And, and I think we need to, re you know, even if we don't respect the man, respect the position respect the position right <laughs> i don't think that high i don't think that highly of yeah. his politics right but he is still the prime minister of our country yep right um and, and i think that oh, screw it. if i want to call him scomo i'll call him scomo <laughs> you you know what send him a text um anyway what happened between dan anyway, and, so between and, dan and scomo, the prime so minister we're, op we're opening up our, <laughs> we're opening up our borders right uh, in, on the 21st of February, we're going to be able to have uh, tour, tourists are going to be allowed back into Australia yeah. with the only condition being you've got to be double vaxxed. Okay. And now the Brains Trust, that is the Victorian Premier, uh, is saying, well, he's now considering a three-jab mandate which means international travellers will not be welcome in Victoria unless they can provide evidence that they've had the three booster. jabs. Meaning a booster. The booster. Yeah, well, <laughs> I think maybe both of them are wrong. Because it has to surely be you've had some sort of jab in the last... I don't get it. In the last... Three months, get, six months, whatever it is. I don't get is. either of them. 180 days. What's 180 days? That's half a year. That's longer so than my attention span. Sometime, sometime in the last six months, you had to have had a jab. I don't get it. What don't you get? Why do we insist that any tourist have any jab? Because... 95%, we won't, we won't, more than 95% of our uh, population, by, by international standards, is fully vaxxed. I, Why should we care who comes in anymore? What we don't care as long as you get, and in, as long as you get vaccinated. That's but that's what I'm asking. Why do we care if they're vaccinated or not when the rest of us are? Go on, give me the line, roll it out. What's the line? The line. Oh, because if they don't have, they can pass it on, and you can still get it, and this and that. The first thing that to came which to a logical my mind, person says, "Oh, so we've been <coughs> lied to." And the, the first thing that the came vaccine. to my mind was that that's the way we want our community to be. We want our community to be vaccinated, okay, but these are tourists. and we They're have to and we have to lead with the best foot forward. And the best foot forward is, if you want to come to Australia, you get vaccinated. Okay, but what if we got? I mean, what's going to happen with? It's Western like Australia? halacha, you know. Halacha is you uh, is you, go with you the do majority. is you do yeah you go with the majority, but you do the most preferable. The the halacha is the preferable way forward is how you act, and in a worst case scenario or in a alternative scenario there are other things to rely on but best foot forward get vaccinated speaking of vaccinations and all this sort of so you stuff, disagree with that I, I disagree let anyone in we've all been vaccinated 
we've been vaccinated. If somebody else gets it, it's their country's problem. But, okay. You know, like we've got sweet FA people left in the hospitals. Honestly. Do you mean patients or staff? Patients. Right? There, there's there's 500-odd people. We've got 100,000 active cases with 500-odd people, 70, I think, yep. in ICU. And I don't know. I mean, I don't even know why we're getting the figures reported to us on a daily basis. I don't understand this in relation to this Harry, attitude to I, it all. Sorry to interrupt you. Please. I, I'd still, we asked this question a couple of weeks ago, and it's popped up again because I'm, I deal with a number of businesses, as you probably do every day. Where are all the people? Where the hell are all the people? Like, on the, I was on the freeway driving to the airport in the afternoon. Oh. Where is everyone? They're on Nepean Highway. <laughs> there aren't that many people they're around. They're on Nepean Highway at exactly the same point, the time I want to leave the house or get back to the <laughs> house, they're on Nepean Highway. Okay, so that's the cars. Where are the people in the factories? Yeah, we the, we don't the, have the, enough workers. The, the... Well, because and they've we've got to opened... isolate. They've got to test. They've got to... Like you just cannot keep this going. I don't know how. I don't know how the schools are operating when all, all of a sudden you know your kids will test positive or a teacher test positive, so the teacher can't come to school for right. two weeks. Yeah. you've got to get a substitute in. Yeah, but like, how many substitutes? Right. So we've got. So have? here's a great case. Um, not hypothetical. There's a guy you at one of my workplaces tomorrow, um, but he called up with COVID two days ago. He's asymptomatic. There's nothing wrong with him. Mm-hmm. He's at home playing video games or whatever. Yep. And uh, he could wear a mask and come to work tomorrow. And, and Why the hell not? Well, because we have rules. They're the rules. And we've got to follow the rules because... Until the, we change the rules again. They're the rules. And um, yes, until such time as they're changed. It makes me think that if I get COVID, yeah. I'm not going to report that I've got COVID. If I'm asymptomatic... If I'm asymptomatic, yeah. I'm not going to report it. I'm just going to go about my regular business. Yep. And I know businesses where the staff within those businesses, um, they've all basically made a pact and there's an understanding. That was hypothetical, by the way. Well, but I know of businesses where the staff have effectively made a pact that under no circumstances are they to get tested. Oh, no way! They're not. They're not going to get what? None of the staff are going to get tested. As in, unofficially, do in, not in, test. Unofficially, do not oh. test, and they can oh work. My gosh. And they can work. They don't have to come into the office. They can work from home, um, but they're not having people out of action. Uh, whatever. It's just a case of I'm not feeling too good. I'm not going to come in. I'll see you in a couple of weeks, or I'll see you when I'm over this thing. Yeah. You're listening to J Air, Jewish Australian Internet Radio. J Air broadcasts to Caulfield and nearby suburbs on 87.8 FM, as well as streaming online at j-air. That's air.com.au. I got a question for you, yeah. and it's only just popped into my head. Like a virgin. No. Um, have you, have you, bad rabbi, have you noticed yeah. more people walking around shops and supermarkets without masks? No. No? No. Okay, maybe it was just me the other night. Melbourne Kosher Butchers is closed tomorrow afternoon because they don't have enough staff. Yeah. Rochelle showed me another photo this week after last week's photo of an empty aisle at Coles. Yep. And it's it's still going on. There's... Uh, and look, it's, the thing is, it's not just the supermarket shelves. There is currently a shortage of everything. Um, we've got a... In fact, I only just pulled the trigger on it yesterday. A fence that has to be replaced at a property. Mm. And it's a long, long fence. So, you know, I got the quote for, from the chippy and I said, look, would we be able to maybe break this up into sections? Because 
the basically we're doing three sides of the property. So you know what? If we break it down and you know we do this side because mm. that's the really bad one, mm -hmm. and then we can do this one because that's probably going to be the next one that falls down if it doesn't before we finish the first one, and then we do the third one. He goes, you know what? That's going to make my life even easier. Yes, let's do that. Do you know why he was happy to do that? Because he could break it up and do it whenever he wants. Because he doesn't know whether he can get all the timber right. to do the job in one hit. Wow. Did you see Tammy got a quote today to clean a kitchen at the shore? Yes. For over $1,700. But you know what? I don't think... You know, do, do we want to talk uh, shore business here and now? I don't no, think it's a, not about shore business. It's, price, it's not shore business. I don't think that's a big price That's a lot of money. Pay. Um, Five years ago, I had a big... Bigger kitchen, worse a kitchen, cleaned for five hundred dollars. Okay, but it's not five years ago. We don't have the overseas. We don't have the overseas backpackers, workers. students yep. who'd be doing that is correct these sorts of jobs just so they can keep travelling around or you know doing whatever. Um, so we've created this problem for ourselves in the big scheme of things. To spend for the for the shul to spend seventeen hundred dollars to bring its kitchen sort of make it all uh, uh, hoity toity neat clean tidy and 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 usable, it is a very small price to pay for the benefits that that's going to bring. Mm. Yep, I mean it's just my seat fees really. It's half of my seat fees probably. Yeah, you and me both. <laughs> uh, boom boom boom. Let's go back to my room so we can do it all night. I don't want to say the rest. You and me, baby, we had nothing but mammals, so let's do it like they do on the Discovery <laughs> Channel. I remember. Oh, there were some bad songs back in the. <laughs> I, I remember. <laughs> what's brought this? What's brought this sense of reminiscing back? I remember sometime around 1985, 86, sitting in our TV room in our house, and there's probably three or four of us watching Countdown, and there's Madonna. Like a virgin. And my dad, in one, in one of bright red, rushes into the room enraged. Do you have any idea what you are listening to? Wow. He was right. I mean, obviously, clearly, clear, clearly right. Yeah. And then, like with this Joe Rogan thing and other things... Uh, uh, similar there um, I remember hearing not long ago there was a uh, a girl on the radio who was asked by a black rapper to sing one of his songs and she's singing she's singing she's singing and there's the n-word that pops up and she's singing she, and he goes hey oh 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 you can't say that this is the this is the artist yeah she says what are you talking about it's in the song it's your I song. love you I love your song no 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 you can't sing it you can't say that so ah. Uh, Am I being too prudish that there is such rubbish that is just so pervasive and morally bankrupt? Uh, to try and put it in simple terms, I'm just, I'm just trying to... How do, how do I count my response? <laughs> um, yes. Yes. There is. Yes, there is. And I blame the Wiggles. Is this why you like why you hate Bob Dylan so much? Oh, God, I just hate <laughs> Bob Dylan. Like seriously. I, nice guy. Bobby, but Bobby Zimmerman <laughs> just who who led him into a record? Oh, but he's the most amazing singer, poet, musician. He's none of those anyway, things. Anyway, you use the holy word that should not be blasphemed, Wiggles. Yeah, I, what was that I, all about? Well, what was that all about? I never allowed the Wiggles into the house when the kids were little, so no videos, no albums. Oh come no, on, no, no Wiggles at all because I honestly like you listen to Dorothy music, the Dinosaur. You listen to today's music and it's just dirty language. Yes, backed by the the music track for Hot Potato. Like it's all just <laughs> it's just repetitive. <laughs> repetitive garbage, garbage that's right. designed, you know, and this is the problem, you know, when you bring children up on a diet of this sort of music, well, then that's the sort of crap they're going to listen to because they've never paid attention to the words 
for for here for comes Dwayne. Whether whether Dwayne it's from Ital, Ital Music eighty four. Ital Music eighty four. So whether it's two two chugga chugga big red car, or you know I want to do all sorts of strange, unusual, and nasty things with you. No one's paying attention to the lyrics of that example that you gave. Yeah, just proves that. Um, so yeah, I never I never let the Wiggles into the house because. It all starts with them. You're a bad father. I'm a terrible father. So, um, what was I going to say about the uh, about all of these lyrics? Um, oh, ethically, too sexy for my shirt. ethically, too sexy it actually for my shirt. slightly ties in with something biblical. Do you want to hear this? Please. So, what's the first Wait. commandment in the Torah? I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods, bar me. No, that's the first law in the Ten Commandments. What's the first law in the Torah? The first law is generally noted as being puru uruvu'u, which means what's the first law in the Torah, Dwayne? Do you know? Be fruitful and multiply. Right. Okay. Yeah, but by any means? Well, this is a good question. That's a, actually a very good question because it leads to... Isn't that why we have... leads to is, these... Isn't that why we have subsequent laws? Because people went, oh... Plural uvu. Oh yeah, let's get into it. And right. somebody had to go. Oh, this yeah, now nah, this this doesn't really make for a cohesive, functioning society if we all just behave like freaking baboons. So if you do something wrong, right, and you can say you it was my wrong, right. If you do something wrong, right, and it, you can blame it on your evil inclination, like your spiritual. Uh, Yetzahara evil inclination, right? Yeah. So what do you say? Well, God put the Yetzahara into me in the first place. So it's not really my fault. It's the Yetzahara's fault that was that's, put into me. That's a cop-out. That's just for people who don't want to take responsibility for their own actions. Ah. That's, that, you know, so like, now that's it leads to Jewish free choice. So it's free that's choice. The Jewish equivalent of, I was drunk at the time, Your Honor. So the one of the most... Uh, well-founded or, or well-known ideas for the Yetzirah being put into us is that it actually enables us to actually do the act of having relations with our partners. Because well, without it, we wouldn't have that kind of lustful sort of attitude that leads us to pura uravu, to being fruitful and multiply. Okay, but then how does that describe the dirty lyrics that appeared in, you know, on all those I'm Madonna just saying on some and, level, you know, Madonna like Britney a virgin, it has and, some merit. Why are we only talking about female... Like, I keep on hearing um, about uh, artists like Nicki Minaj and, and um, Miley Cyrus and all these. I mean, what, the, there aren't blokes that make dirty... Dirty songs? Have I embarrassed myself enough? I don't know. Have you embarrassed <laughs> yourself enough? I was going to start talking about my prostate. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's let's not do that. The right stuff. Oh come on! What? All right, talk. What's about wrong with prostate. what's wrong with electric bikes? Oh, I made pickles! I made pickles! Yes, you made pickles. If anyone wants pickles, send me a message. Do you like pickles, Dwayne? Yeah, send. You can. Dwayne doesn't you know like if pickles. If anybody would like pickle pickles, cucumbers, if anybody would like a pickle cucumber nah. right now, call on nine zero six nine two zero eight seven. Yes, you'll get a free jar if you call in the next minute. Yes. <gasps> Ooh, free pickles. Free pi- a free jar of pickles. What? Anything green is bad for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what's wrong with electric bikes? There, there's nothing wrong with electric bikes, Rabbi. As I'm, long as they are confined to within the boundaries of your own property. <laughs> How's that for an answer? I've seen people who have them set up in their garage and they've got a TV screen in front of them and they're cycling like through the Alps, the, through the French Alps and the Swiss Alps. And mm. they're doing the Tour de France on the, inside their garage. And it's the latest craze. And you've joined them I'm in not, this I'm craze? not doing that. No? I like going for a ride in on Sunday mornings around Albert Park. Yes, I've seen your the post Esplanade. up. Here I am at Luna Park and here I am on the Esplanade. And here but I am my here hands here. were hurting. Yeah. Because, and the, the carpels were hurting. Right. The carps. 
yeah. the left and right cuts. Yeah, yeah. So I got handle a razor you know, handle. You know, you never have that problem on a Harley <laughs> Davidson street glide. That's why you bought it. No, I don't own because a Harley you, Davidson you... street glide. I'm just using <laughs> it. I'm just using it as an example. Uh, but yeah, no, no bloke ever got off his Harley Davidson Indian Yamaha Suzuki Boulevard after riding for two hours or so. Go, oh no, my carpal tunnel area of my hands hurts so much. Oh no. I feel it's it's a bit of fun. I'm enjoying you. it. You're enjoying it? You're not getting in anyone's way? There's this movie that was made probably about so 10 I'll years ago. So I'll take that ago. as a yes, you are getting it's into people's new, way? It's a new, new thing. New topic. I'm sick of talking about the bike now. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to say, yeah, how good is it being out in the fresh air? And No, nah, it's not going to happen. I'm sorry. Uh, the only vehicle movie. on the road. Excuse me. <laughs> Library Oats. Oh, I hope those test results come back sooner than, than later. Um, yeah. But the only vehicle on our roads that should not be making vroom vroom noises are the trams. The That's only, it. The only vehicles that are not making vroom vroom noises are all of your cars that don't work. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and my bike works. Yeah, good for you. My bike works too. Yeah. Thank thank the good Lord. <laughs> it's the, uh, <laughs> You bought one thing. My that's motor, your only vehicle you've my, ever bought new. Motor, yeah, that's the only new vehicle I've ever bought. And at the moment, it is the only vehicle that I can actually drive. <laughs> um, there was this movie, Idiocracy, made about 10 or 15 years ago. And it was about a guy a who Michael wakes up. Moore movie? No, no, I've forgotten his name. Who's in it? Anyway, it's a terrible. It's a really. A, it's a badly made C grade movie, but the the idea behind it is clever. In five hundred years' time, a guy wakes up from hibernation, and the world is in complete disrepair, and everyone is just everyone's mad. Everyone's gone stupid because they've just had it so easy for so long. And they and the rubbish is everywhere. They have no idea how to clean things. They don't know how to use language properly. Everything is stuffed. And it reminded me. I was reminded of that movie when I saw an article about CO two machines in filtration units, uh, filtration machines in Iceland. It's the country in the world with the biggest load of CO two filtration machines. They filter CO two from the atmosphere, and every country should follow them. Mate, I got a simpler idea. Trees. I got a re- well, I was about to say. Yeah, go on. What's your I idea? Was, I was going to say, how about, about trees? Trees. And I feel you know, like it's like sometimes people look for the most complex solution. Yeah. To the simplest of challenges, it's like we know a group of people at the moment who are staring down the barrel of a very expensive air conditioning repair, and you and I looked at each other and went. Why don't you just put a couple of splitties there and there, and that'll solve your problem, and you'll save at least half the money. Yeah, you know we overthink the solution. People over people overthink things, and yet we're still at at the moment ripping out of the world's forests a football ground every minute. No, I think it's every second. Mind every you, second. these 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 uh, CO two filtration units, like what sort of footprint do they have? And how many trees could you plant in that same area? Mm. And would those trees filter the same amount of CO2? But then my question is, how are these CO2 filtration units powered so as to not produce their own right, CO2? CO2. Like, yeah, you, would it, hope that, you would hope that they would have wind the, farms to power the, old, the CO2 it's, filtration units. That's the old perpetual units. motion problem that, you know, eventually you soak up that much energy what is that wrong it just with can't people? keep... Trees what are, what's wrong are, with people? Trees, no, Pesach, we've got about three minutes left of our show, car- and now you ask what is wrong with people. Trees are a carbon sink. They release oxygen. I mean, these CO two filtration machines. They don't release oxygen. Do, do you know what the? Well, yeah. Do, hold on. What? How do they not release oxygen? They just capture the CO two and they put them and uh, store CO two and store CO two like they they put oh, them well, down dumb. into the earth or whatever. That's dumb. Yeah, well, they because can't. Because you've got to sep- at least the tree separates the the C from the O2. The O2, that's right. So I, I just don't understand what's wrong with people and how why they're not thinking much more simply. Because trees. So that was you, Harry, calling out BS when he sees BS. Well done. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, th- I'm glad we got that one over and done with. I think we're reaching the end of the program. I think we are. We've got a couple of minutes to go. Uh, there's nothing else on my list. The freedom. What was the freedom convoy? That was so the freedom convoy was in Canada. Is that so people don't have to wear masks or something, or what is the, it? They're they're pro- so like all these truckers, hundreds, thousands of, of truckers are protesting against. Um, Oh, what's his name? Castro's boy. Trudeau. Uh, Trudeau. Uh, he's, <laughs> uh, you he's like how bl- I did that? He's bloody Castro's son. This is he's, dead he's ringer. Dead ringer. Dead ringer. You put a grey beard on that head <laughs> and you'd just, be, you'd just be going, oh, yeah, we, we can see it. Um, yes, yeah, so all those truckers are, and they're driving down to the US border and they're blockading the border. And then the cops, the Canadian cops got involved and the tow truck drivers... Came, like the heavy haulage. But why did they do it? What's What was the... Because there's all this Meshuggah stuff going on in Canada, like we've had going on oh, here. Oh, it's the laws, is it? Lockdowns. Is it too many laws? Well, it's the law, it's the vibe, it's Marbo, it's, <laughs> you know, it's Canada. Um, <laughs> it's Canada. Yeah, it's Marbo. And, and, and the, and the truckers, Marbo. the truckers have just had enough. And they got the cops call all these heavy haulage guys in, and instead of them pulling all these trucks out of the way to get rid of the blockade... They've joined the blockade. Seriously, They've joined the blockade. And you know what? You know what movie I have not seen for years and years and years? Smoking the Bandit. No, Smoking the Bandit. <laughs> I, I watched that on a Sunday <laughs> afternoon not so long ago. But um, um, you're looking it up, are with, you? With Chris Christopherson, Convoy. Mm. No, I don't know that. I, I've heard of it, but I don't know. Yeah. It. Oh, it was a terrible movie. With a great theme song, um, are we finishing off with it? I'm gonna. Oh, well, yeah, I'm gonna we'll see if I can actually the find song. the theme song. So it. while we're, while it we're was, waiting for Harry, good luck with boom. all the kids on the MTA program and all the other gap year programs in Israel. Um, may the Almighty keep them safe, and well, may uh, what's his name, the Prime Minister of Israel. Bennett. Well, it was May, May Bennett keep them all safe and happy, uh, and everything should be good for everyone. Oh, mine. And on that note, Rabbi Pesach, I shall wish you a good Shabbos. This isn't a Jewish song. No, it's not. Good Shabbos! Good Shabbos, we hope you all enjoy, and we're going to leave you with a little bit of Convoy. Seventh of June, when they highballed over the pass. Bulldog Mac with a can on back and a Jaguar hauling ass. He's ten on the floor, stroking boars. Seat cover starting to gain. Now, Beaver, you a trucking with a rubber duck, and I'm about to pull a plug on your drain. Visit coronavirus.vic.gov.au for a booking. J-Air 88FM, bringing your community to you. This message was made available with a grant.